In 1993, comedy and horror movies got mixed together and were delivered in a little green package known as the Leprechaun. With eight movies in the franchise, it's no wonder why this character has become known as a horror movie icon. With the last sequel in the franchise coming in in 2018, did this character hold the test of time? Or is it just a green, ugly mess? What is up, back, David Confused? Thank you for stopping by again. This video is going to be about a franchise that's very close and dear to me. The Leprechaun franchise. One of the reasons being when I was a little sprout, when I was a little kid, and I would go to the VHS rental store down the street from my house, and I started watching horror movies. One of the first movies I got was Leprechaun 1 and 2. The crazy thing about Leprechaun 1 and 2 is it's such a wacky sort of weird character but there are horror movie aspects to it but there's comedy aspects to it and it's just this weird mix of the two but they make it work now what we're gonna do is i'm gonna give you a really quick summary of basically the story of leprechaun and then we're gonna go talk about the last two films in the franchise kind of the remakes of the eight film franchise. Okay, so the Leprechaun is a magical creature from Ireland that's been alive for thousands and thousands of years. And his main goal is to make sure that he never loses his gold. If you take a Leprechaun's gold, you put your own life in your own hands and usually it's not gonna work out for you. Now. The first six films, the character Leprechaun was always played by legendary actor Warwick Davis. Warwick Davis has been in Star Wars, Warwick Davis has been in Harry Potter. Warwick Davis is the man. Basically, he's the man. But we also see some pretty good other actors in these movies like Jennifer Aniston and Ice-T. Now, in the first movie, the Leprechaun was brought to the United States and like North Dakota from Ireland because some gentleman took it upon himself to steal the leprechaun's gold and the leprechaun and bring him to uh, to the United States and that was just an awful idea and he he didn't it didn't work out it didn't work out for him and throughout the movies basically for some reason the leprechaun's gold goes missing and basically he goes through everybody killing everybody in his path in magical mysterious weird ways until he gets his gold now at the end of each movie the leprechaun always does meet his demise but it's never in like the same way ever there's clearly hundreds of ways to kill the leprechaun and in each movie, they find a different way to do it. But they always end up doing it. Whether it be making him touch a four-leaf clover to pushing him out in the depths of space. Uh, yeah, the leprechaun finds a way to die at the end of every movie. I've got a lot of killing to make up for. So the first six films travel from like, you know, North Dakota all the way to like Las Vegas. And then number four is in space. Obviously it's in space. Where else are you going to go? In every franchise, eventually you have to end up in space at least once, right? You don't. You really don't. You don't have to go to space all the time. But after he goes to space, he comes back to America to go to the hood. And then back to the hood. So... That's a thing. Oh, and uh, apparently the leprechaun loves the marijuana. All right. Fast forward to the last two movies in the franchise, Leprechaun Origins and Leprechaun Returns. Now, let's talk about Origins because it's clearly the worst part of this franchise. WWE Studios uses 
their wrestler actor named Hornswoggle to play the Leprechaun. Except the Leprechaun in the first six movies is like a talking, funny, rhyming, crazy, serial killer, maniac, slasher type thing, right? In this movie, he's like a goblin character that doesn't say a word and just growls and sees in like heat vision like the Predator. Yeah, I know. And so it's based on this small town in Ireland that at one point stole the leprechaun's gold and he's mad about it. So instead of killing the townspeople, they find tourists and set them up to be killed by the leprechaun until they can pay him back the amount of gold that they stole. Now, for some reason, they went with the whole leprechaun franchise in order to display this movie. This movie has nothing to do with any of the other movies whatsoever. It's a complete standalone and is not connected to the Leprechaun franchise whatsoever. If they have literally called it anything else like Gold Loving Goblin or Tiny Goblin Loves to Eat People Because He Doesn't Have Gold, that would have made more sense than calling it a Leprechaun movie because it has nothing to do with any of the other films. And yeah, let's just say it. All the acting in this movie is awful. It's terrible. <laughs> and so this movie is just like, honestly, I don't like ripping movies completely. I try to find little shreds of good in it. This one is really, really hard to find something good about this movie. Like zero nothing this movie should not be part of your leprechaun experience moving on to a movie called leprechaun returns <laughs> this movie also does not star warwick davis this was the leprechaun we had i'm a leprechaun with you this is the leprechaun we now have with leprechaun returns and now you're dead Cool, cool, cool. The one good thing about this movie is it is almost like a direct sequel from Leprechaun 1. It takes place in North Dakota at the same house that Leprechaun 1 took place in. And it even has an actor named Ozzy that was also a part of the first movie to make a cameo in this one. No. The problem is this one because it's made so many years later after the first movie, basically every other movie in between is now canceled out because of this movie. So it's almost like a redirection that almost like changes the course of time for the Leprechaun. Basically Jennifer Aniston's daughter is now the main protagonist of this movie. And she's moving to the house that they used to live in in North Dakota to turn it into like sorority house for college. When of course the leprechaun returns because you never actually kill the leprechaun. What this movie did have was that old school messy bloody comedy slasher horror that the first four movies really did have. Now as I don't like this particular Leprechaun as much as I like the other ones, it is miles ahead of Leprechaun Origins. Miles. Like... Miles. It does feel like a Leprechaun movie. It does feel like a 90's comedy slasher horror movie. And... I love it. Granted, it's not Warwick Davis that's in, you know, the suit of the Leprechaun, but it could have been way, way worse. Like Leprechaun Origins. Well, Leprechaun Returns, yeah, I would say if you're gonna look up the Leprechaun and you want to broaden your horizon of your horror movies and, you know, do a little retro nostalgia checkout, this could be a good one. Well, thank you very much for tuning in to my review of the Leprechaun movies. I really appreciate it. Now it's time that I put someone on blast and that person is Michael Fawcett. 
Thank you so much for watching my videos and commenting. I really, really appreciate it. Well, that's it for a Dave and Confused video on the Leprechauns. If you want to like and subscribe, I would super appreciate it. Thank you very much, and uh, at least our dogs aren't werewolves. Hey, man. See you on the flip side.